What's going on guys, it's Colin here for Next Gen Tactics, and this is the first video in a series where I'm going to be analyzing Guns For Hire's gameplay that he sends me to give him some tips and tricks to improve his game. And on the flip side, I'm going to bring someone in to give me some uh, some tips for improvement as well. So right here, we're playing Rush on Port Valdez, and I hop on a quad bike gun spawns with me. And the first tip that I'm going to give him is to always keep an eye on the enemy spawn, especially when you're defending an RMM comm station. He was shooting at that medic. That guy ran by and was no longer a threat, but he gets flanked from the enemy spawn direction and gets taken down. So you always want to check your back, check where the enemies are spawning from, and make sure that you have eyes on them. Now, whenever you respawn as well, uh, one thing that Guns isn't doing is dropping an ammo pack as soon as he respawns on a squad mate. So especially if that squad mate is not also running the assault kit. Now here we do get the MCOM station destroyed, and here you can see his excellent trigger finger at work as he switches to the MP443 and drops that guy who was coming to take us out. Now the direction that Guns is about to point in, back towards this construction building, that's the enemy spawn location. So when we were taking down this MCOM station, that's where he should have focused his attention rather than paying, uh, you know, spending too much time on that medic that ran by that was no longer a threat. He's also running the 40 mil grenade on this kit, and where we actually have a couple of engineers with rockets that can take down the uh, the heavy MG, the heavy MGs on this base. What I'd actually recommend is that you run the smoke grenade on this kit, uh, especially where we're only running with two assault guys, and there are a number of pretty nasty choke points on this map. You want to have ample smoke cover to push through. So that would that would be kind of the recommended loadout for an assault when you're attacking this map. Would be you know the rifle rifle of your choosing and smoke grenades. He's going to get a kill here, but our squad is in the process of pushing up, and you don't want to hesitate. You, you always want to move forward with your spawn, and he's going to sit here and he's in a sight line, so when you drop ammo and you're going to recharge, you always want to make sure you do that behind cover, so he's going to get taken down by the tank. The squad's pushed up the right-hand side. He's going to spawn on us, and now we're going to try and take down this, uh, this B crate on the right-hand side. And I think that he might make me eat my words here once or twice and actually get a kill with the uh, with the smoke grenade, or sorry, with the 40 mil grenade launcher. But uh, by and large, the smoke's much more useful than uh, than the grenade because also when you're trying to attack, you want to have as much cover as possible. So blowing down buildings and, and putting holes in walls and taking out a lot of your cover that sort of thwarts your ability to be you know sneaky as you go in and try and arm the station you don't want to take down a lot of walls unless you have to to try and expose some defenders that are hiding and he's going to post up in this building right behind the MCOM station as we go and try and get the arm He's going to take over the uh, the enemy heavy MG emplacement and he's going to actually get a couple of kills here one or two but what you want to do is if you're on an enemy emplacement you want to get some kills and then you want to move on he's actually going to get shot here uh, because the gun's overheated he can't shoot and he's still looking out the window so as soon as you start firing off a heavy mg in the enemy base they know where you are you want to move immediately and that's actually a good strategy to serve as a distraction also if they're looking for you on the heavy mg then they're not focused on your teammate who are trying to take down the objective at this point, we're all kind of spawning outside, and <clears throat> we're in a good position to try and take this down. Now, what Guns is going to do is actually focus his attention on the enemy spawn, but where they're actually already posted up, you want to make sure that you minimize your exposure because they can come around, and what, what's going to happen is he's going to get shot in the back. So he would have been better off if he's going to stay outside to back up against that cliff and make sure that he basically has a, a full field of view. He can see where the enemies are coming from. If you leave your back exposed, then chances are you're going to get taken down. And we actually have to push up again and take a second crack at this, but no worries. And Guns is running the AN-94 assault rifle, which is uh, an excellent choice for him. It's a very powerful gun. He doesn't yet have Magnum Ammo unlocked, and I think that once he gets to that point, if he learns how to burst fire some of the automatic weapons, he'll find some that might even be more to his liking, like the X-8 prototype, the M416, but for now, the, the, the AN-94, well, the AN-94 is a good choice regardless. Now, I will talk a little bit more about burst firing this gun later on, but... Uh, at this point, we're going to get these bases taken down, and we call out to him that he doesn't want to go in the building because it's going to collapse. So this base, if you can get through the choke points, is fairly straightforward because both buildings can be collapsed. And uh, in Guns' recent video where he's playing Rush on Port Valdez, he actually asked the question, which MCOM do you want to take first if one of them is in a destructible environment and the other one's not? 
you want to focus on the MCOM that is not in the destructible environment. You can always take a building down as a last ditch effort to complete a base or complete a set of objectives. But you you don't want to you, you you want to leave the enemies guessing. You know, you want to have them split between two objectives. What you can also do is use the um, use the destructible MCOM as a distraction. Send someone in to arm that and then run away and go for the non destructible MCOM. Let the enemies disarm it. Now, one tip as well, and I haven't actually put up a caption on the screen, but I noticed that he's not using the spot function. So, as he's in the back of the base, he is getting these kills, but before you start shooting at an enemy, it's always a good idea to press the select button on the PS3 controller, and that's actually going to mark the enemy on the minimap and uh, as well in, in 3D, you know, for your whole team's perspective for them to see. And when you spot enemies, then if you have a, a coordinated team, they're as good as dead. So I'd like to see him using the spot function a little bit more and, uh, and the smoke grenade and just being more aware of his surroundings and making sure that his back's covered and anticipating where enemies are coming from. So in this sequence right here, he actually does a really good job. We're going to get set up behind these containers. Meatwagon and I are going to try and push up as well as Bentley and, and Guns maintains a spawn point back here for a long time. And he's patrolling the area back and forth. He's, he's uh, checking his back. He's checking from the enemy spawn location. So he's doing a very good job here. So hats off. I'm not going to not going to give you any grief, man, for uh, for what you're doing right here. Now, one thing I will mention just uh, as we kind of have a lull on the action, he's, he's acting as the spawn point is when burst firing the AN94. Now, Guns has a really fast trigger finger. He can spam that thing fast. But when you're at distance, like this enemy right here, he's spamming it too fast. And what you want to do is make sure that the reticle in your sight is on the enemy, burst, let the recoil reset, and burst again. <laughs> I left this clip in so you can watch Meatwagon and I flip a chopper and have to bail out. So <laughs> we're, uh, we're still hanging tight back here and, and trying to launch an attack. We have to actually take a couple of runs at this thing. And in a little while, I'm actually going to switch over to our squad communications. But once we actually get a station armed, you know, Guns is still, he's patrolling back and forth. He's been a spawn point ninja, as I like to call it. And, and he's actually taken to that term quite excitedly, so uh, <laughs> like that. But, he, you know, he's staying alive back at the base. And uh, I'm not going to break into, uh, into disco music and start singing Staying Alive or anything, but he's doing a fantastic job. And when you act as, as an effective mobile spawn point and you're killing enemies... And supporting your team, that actually, uh, as much as KD isn't important, having the gun skill to be able to defend yourself is very important. Right here, he's burst firing too fast again at this enemy. And as you burst, the recoil is obviously going to make you very inaccurate. So you want to make sure that you know, you're always on the enemy when you pull the trigger. It's very important, especially with weapons like the AN-94 and the M16. So now, once the station gets lit up, he's actually going to move from his mobile spawn location and try and help us support and defend that station so that uh, we can destroy it. You don't want to sit back totally out of the action, not helping the team, and I'm not quite sure how they got that one disarmed. I was calling out in the game chat, like, how did they do that? And what had happened was a tank had gone between me and the station. I didn't see it. They got it uh, disarmed, but we did get the B crate destroyed. So we're down to one. So let's flip to game chat for a second here. All right. You, uh, I'll take a run at him, meet if you don't want to. Okay. Keep doing yep. It. Go All ahead. Right, I'm, I'm here. I'll do it. Yep. Go. I'm on plan A, guys. All right. Bentley's got it. I'm running right through. Oh shit! There's three guys in here with me. <laughs> I just killed two of them. They're set up pretty good here now. Like some of them are gonna hang out at the yeah. tower and try and snipe us. Guess what? The sniper rifle doesn't have a disarm button. Good shit, guys. All right, I'm back. So in that uh, sequence there. What I was trying to show you is that because we had that presence and the mobile spawn point in the base, we were methodically able to surround the MCOM station, get a couple of really good positions on it, and set it up, arm it, and defend it. 
Now, you can take one of two approaches to try and take a station. You can either try and rush right in there and arm it and surprise the enemy. But when the defenders are set up, it's a better idea to, to try and set up and, and gain map control. And that's what we did. Now, just back there, guns swung out far left, and, and I think that's just through lack of map knowledge. When you are trying to take this route up the left-hand side, you want to hug as close to the pipes as possible while always keeping an eye out for enemies that are waiting for you. When he went out across the road, he was no longer covered. He was taken down, actually, from the roof of uh, the B station. What we want to do here is get set up, and A and B, or neither one of them are in destructible environments. B is probably easiest to get because there's more cover, so, and you can kind of sneak in through the building. So that's what I'm trying to do right now, as Guns is going to sit back with uh, the rest of the crew. I actually got killed trying to arm it, so <laughs> we, are, uh, we are pushed back and we have to reset. But, you know, since we have a presence in the enemy base, at no point during this base do we get pushed out and do we have to come back in from the previous spawn point. So that's a really huge advantage for the team. And Guns', abil Guns ability to sort of be stealthy, be sneaky, and, and work the map, that's going to be a huge advantage once he knows the maps better, knows where to posi position himself. Right here isn't the best location, and he's sitting around a lot of things that can be blown up. So you never, ever want to post up around... There's a red box right to his left. That thing is explosive, so... If, even if he tries to duck behind cover, an enemy can shoot at that box and take him out with it. So you have to be careful. He actually died before the box went up, but it did get destroyed as well. So he was a dead man one way or the other. You want to be careful of the environment. Anything that's red can blow up. And that is kind of a, a common theme in first-person shooter games, but really important when you're trying to hide because with the destructible environment, even if you are behind a wall near one of those uh, objects, it can take at the wall and take you down with it. So you have to be careful. Right here, he gets killed, but that's kind of cool. That's fine because he's the defenders are focused on trying to flush him out and flush out that mo mobile spawn point. And in the meantime, we are able to go in and arm the objective, and we get set up really good here. Uh, as soon as we get this armed and, and I kind of take a look at things, I'm like, yeah, this game's over. Now, one thing that I also want to point out is that he should not us underestimate hip firing with the AN-94, with any of the assault rifles for that matter. He, uh, when you're aimed down sights, you have less sensitivity and less mobility. He would have, uh, he almost died there. The, uh, the sniper was shooting at him with his sidearm. Had he been hip firing, he could have dropped that guy as soon as he came through the door. So when you're crouched like he was, you have a very small hip fire spread. Anyway, great game by guns. A couple of things to work on. You can see that he actually uh, finishes ahead of me on the scoreboard. So hats off to him. Good game. And uh, with uh, incorporating some of these tips, I think that uh, he's only going to get better and better. That's it for me, guys. Cheers. We'll talk soon. If you like this video, you may want to check out a few of these. At the top, we have Guns for Hire on the Gun Shop, talking about the Xbox 720 with Windows 8. Next off, on NGT Zombies, we have Spiderbite, Hypermole, MeWagon, and myself playing a custom PC map called Banjai. And last off, we have on NGT Games, Spiderbite playing Crisis 2 on the PC in 1080p. Click the corresponding thumbnails to watch the videos.